Hello, this is Ryan Wheeler from the Robert S. Peabody Institute of Archaeology in Andover, Massachusetts. Today, I'm going to be creating a cardboard 3D slice model of a megalonyx femur. You might be asking, what does all that mean? Well, megalonyx is a genus of giant ground sloth that existed here in North America for over 10 million years. They became extinct about 11,000 years ago. Our friend Bernard Means at Virginia Commonwealth University's Virtual Curation Lab uh, has done lots and lots of 3D scanning at institutions all across the country. Uh, and included in his scans uh, is the femur of one of these giant ground sloths uh, from the collection of the Smithsonian Institution. Uh, Bernard has taken uh, his 3D scan and created a slice model. So he's broken it up into uh, about 26 separate pieces that can then be cut out of cardboard and assembled. Uh, and so on his WordPress blog, uh, he, you can actually find uh, his plans as well as a little animated video showing the virtual assembly of one of these slice models. Uh, there are five pages of plans that you can download from Dr. Means' uh, WordPress site. Uh, this is what one of those pages look like. You can see the individual pieces here. They're all numbered and they include these little registration marks which are very important in terms of uh, assembling all of the pieces when we get to that stage. So what kind of things will you need for this project? Well, you'll need some nice thick cardboard. You don't want to use something like the thin cardboard from a cereal carton. Uh, that's going to be too skinny and it won't give you uh, the nice three dimensions that you uh, need for this model. Uh, this is a nice thick piece of cardboard uh, that we wound up getting in the mail. In fact, it's possibly a little too thick, but the megalonyx femur is a really uh, big, thick, sort of flattish piece of bone, uh, so I decided to go ahead and use this. We'll see how it, uh, how it comes out. You also want to print out all five pages of the plans. In fact, having two sets uh, isn't a bad idea in case you uh, make a mistake when you're creating your patterns. You want a nice uh, sharp pair of scissors as well as uh, an X-Acto knife with lots of these number 11 uh, blades. Uh, they get dull pretty quickly cutting through this cardboard, so you'll want to have uh, a good supply of the blades on hand. I converted um, all of the uh, pieces into these patterns, just with regular paper, uh, that I was then able to trace onto my cardboard. And a good tip is to make sure that you follow the, the grain of the cardboard, essentially, or sort of a, go against the grain of the cardboard. So I, uh, I want my piece to be on here like this, so that when I look in cross-section, I've got that honeycomb of the cardboard going along the edge of the long side of uh, the piece of my model. Uh, that's really important. Uh, I tried this and I made one piece where I was trying to save, conserve cardboard uh, and I followed the, I, I oriented the piece uh, in a different way on the cardboard and I didn't get a nice clean cut on the edge. Uh, in the next part of this video, I'll demonstrate making a few of these pieces uh, and then uh, in the third part, we will actually do the assembly. And in the fourth part, uh, I've decided to paint this and decorate it uh, so that it looks uh, river stained, like it came out of one of the uh, rivers in Florida where I'm from. Uh, and you do get a lot of these uh, fossil bones from this uh, Rancho La Brean, uh, fauna. So I'll see you in a second as we start to begin uh, cutting out some of these pieces. I'm back and I'm ready to start transferring my pattern over to my cardboard. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to replace my number 11 blade so that I've got a nice, fresh, new, sharp 
number 11 in my A handle here. Before I start cutting, I'll angle my camera so that you can watch. I'm just going to transfer this over by making a quick tracing. One thing that I noticed when I was working on this was that some of the pieces are very skinny and some of the pieces are very small, especially uh, if they're printed out on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper like we have here at home in our regular household home office printer. And so what I did was I, I scaled them up a little bit by adding uh, a couple eighths of an inch around uh, each side. And that's really helped in this overall process to make the pieces um, a, tiny, a tiny bit bigger. There we go, that's not bad. Good, and this is actually the piece that I uh, had made earlier, uh, but was a little unhappy with. Uh, and you can see that um, what I wound up with when I followed the grain of the cardboard was a really ragged edge. I don't have that nice honeycomb pattern. I have a little bit there, but not so much on this side. And so I'm hoping that in redoing this piece, I'm going to wind up with um, a much better cut. It's also really helpful to have uh, a cutting board so that you can protect your uh, dining room table and not get in trouble for uh, slicing and dicing uh, the table up. So I always wind up pulling the knife towards me when I'm making these cuts. And the nice new blade is going to help me get a nice, nice fresh cut. So before I forget, I'm going to transfer over the number. This is piece number 19. And I'm going to transfer quickly over the registration marks, which will help me orient this piece when I go ahead to put together my model in a few minutes. Looks like we're almost done here. And there's our, there's our finished piece. And you can see that I have that nice honeycomb pattern uh, on both sides. I think this one's going to work a lot better than the, uh, the other one that I initially created. So uh, stay tuned. I'll be back in a second and we'll start to assemble the model. I have all of my pieces assembled and actually stacked up here. You can see the bone starting to take shape uh, here on my cutting mat. And if we pan over a little, we can see Dr. Mean's virtual assembly of the pieces for the 3D slice model of the Megalonyx femur. I found that uh, in assembling this, it was really helpful to uh, have Dr. Mean's video running while I was uh, figuring out exactly how to assemble the pieces. Uh, the registration marks help, uh, but also uh, getting a sense of uh, which pieces sort of jut in and which ones uh, kind of jut out, uh, I think is uh, really handy to have that playing in the background. Uh, I'm going to be using uh, some of this clear silicone glue. Uh, I just happen to have uh, a tube of this open. I've been using it on some other uh, cardboard projects and found that it was uh, uh, pretty handy. Uh, it takes a little uh, while to set up, maybe 35 or 45 minutes, uh, but it's also fairly flexible. Uh, and uh, water soluble and so it allows me to move the pieces around quite a bit to get them uh, into position as uh, I wanted them. 
Uh, so uh, in a second, I'm going to go ahead and start gluing our, uh, all of our pieces uh, together. Okay, time to start gluing our pieces together. One thing that Dr. Mean suggested was to work from the inside out, and I, I think that's probably a pretty good suggestion. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to start with the um, uh, the lower half of the model uh, around piece 14, which is about the middle, and work kind of out that direction, and then I'll add the um, the upper half of the model. And I've got it stacked. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the way that it's stacked right now. I feel like that nice ball articulation there uh, has got the, the 3D effect that I really want. And this glue is going to give me an opportunity to wiggle around a little bit. So I'm not too worried about, about that. And I probably don't need very much glue in order to get these pieces to stick together just a little bit. I'm pretty happy with that effect right there and I can wiggle these a little bit as necessary uh, especially as I start to add some of the pieces uh, above and below. Not bad. Looks pretty good. I'm going to do the rest of this off camera, and when I come back, I should have it all put together. So I have uh, all of the pieces glued together in two uh, big chunks. So I have sort of a top half and a bottom half. And I'm going to uh, join these together in a few minutes, but I'm going to give the uh, adhesive uh, a little bit of a chance to set up. I'm pretty happy with the uh, three-dimensionality uh, of the pieces. I think it's going to look pretty sharp. Uh, you can already sort of get a sense of the, uh, the ball joint there and some of the other uh, articulation points. Um, uh, and so uh, I'm pretty happy uh, overall with this build. Uh, I'm going to give it a second to set up, and then I'll be back to... Uh, to do the final uh, glue, and then we'll have to wait a little while for uh, the glue to uh, set up. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and try to glue together my two halves. Here's how they go. Yeah, looks pretty good. Hmm, I like it. Okay. Well, there we have it. Looks pretty good. Really just need to let it sit up now. Uh, I'm going to uh, use a little black spray paint and I'm going to use some brown acrylic paint to put some highlights on it. Uh, but at this point, it just needs to, uh, the glue just needs to set. So we'll be back to spray paint it in a little bit. Hi, we're out here in the garage where we have a little bit better ventilation for uh, our final stages of painting and decorating our uh, Megalonyx femur, our 3D cardboard slice model uh, of the Megalonyx femur designed by Bernard Means of the Virtual Curation Lab at Virginia Commonwealth University. Uh, I think it came out pretty nicely. Stand back here so that you can take a look at it. I've just got a can of black spray paint left over from some other projects. I'm going to go ahead and 
paint it fairly lightly. I don't want to soak it. Yeah, this is going to give us a really nice finished look to the uh, to the piece, and then we're going to hit it with some brown acrylic paint to add a little bit of a little bit of extra detail. Yeah, that's not bad. Looks pretty good. I like the uh, I like the black finish. And we'll uh, we'll let that dry, and then we'll add a few details with the uh, brown acrylic paint. So it looks like it came out of one of the, the river bottoms in Florida. Well, the glue has dried, as as has the uh, spray paint, and so we now have really our finished 3D uh, cardboard slice model of the Megalonyx femur. Uh, I think it came out uh, pretty nicely, but I want to add um, a few more details. I want to I mixed up a little bit of brown uh, paint, uh, some acrylic paint, some modeling paint, and I'm just going to kind of uh, maybe do a little dry brushing on here, just to add um, a little bit of uh, of highlighting. So you can watch uh, along while I uh, I do a little bit of that right now. Just to give it a little bit of uh, kind of added detail and texture. And if I don't like it, I can always go over it again with some black spray paint. But I kind of like the way this is coming out. This is this is pretty much what I had in my in my mind's eye. So now this really reminds me of some of the big fossil bones that come out of some of the some of the rivers in central Florida, uh, where in some cases entire ground sloths have been uh, been preserved and uh, and then found later by uh, avocational fossil hunters as well as paleontologists. good I'm pretty 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 pleased with that yeah I like it uh, one final final touch oh, is that my son made a nice uh, uh, background uh, we've got sort of the river there um, and uh, and some trees and so we can kind of create our create a little display of our um, of our finished uh, finished product um, but uh, I hope that you've uh, enjoyed watching this video. Uh, I'm thinking about trying to build some of the other uh, 3D slice models that Dr. Means has posted uh, from his 3D scans. Uh, and if I get a chance to do that, I will uh, I'll share those uh, as well. So thanks very much and uh, check for uh, more videos here at the Robert S. Peabody Institute of Archaeology. Thanks.